Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Um, today, Alexa Weber, our sommelier, and I are going to be talking Italian wines. Um, my name is Christine Pollock. I'm the marketing director for Pudding River Wine Cellars. And we have gotten um, several questions from folks about um, comparing Italian wines with Oregon wines and just kind of some general information. Um, because we, they know we can tap into Alexa's extensive uh, education in the wine industry. Um, so Alexa, just to kick things off um, for this session, why don't you describe some of your background? Um, we know you're a certified sommelier and you have um, other education in the Italian um, uh, wines. Um, so why don't you give us an overview of your background? Sure, um, just to kind of sum up, uh uh, now almost 15 year wine career. Um, I kind of fell in love with wine working for a small retail shop in Eastern Oregon um, in between college. At some point I fell in love with French wine and that um, led me on a trajectory to uh, not only explore the wines of France, but also at some point moved there for a year during, um, uh, during school to study, uh, drink French wine, eat French food, um, I was also a skier, so I lived in the Alps, and that was a good opportunity to ski some of the um, great resorts. But um, in that time, I, uh, after my, my, my time in France, uh, I moved to Vermont, where that was my first wine job, and I was, a, um, I was a sort of like a wine steward for a man who was at that point an advanced sommelier. So, um, so he sort of started to mentor me a little bit, and I was interested moved back to Utah um, and uh, became a, did my intro song class. About seven years later when I um, received my job as the sommelier at the Luxury Hotel, then that was when I uh, furthered my uh, testing, mostly because it's not inexpensive to do a lot of these classes. Um, if you're an enthusiast, it's definitely something to consider. But uh, in that time, the company I was working for I paid for my French and Italian wine scholar program from the Wine Scholar Guild as well. So both really reputable bodies for studying wine. Um, and at this point, I'm looking forward, as looking forward, I'm, I'm hoping to do some Wine and Spirits Education Trust classes as well. So we'll just see where it takes me now that my kids are a little older. I might have a tiny bit of time to do something for myself. Yeah, that's awesome. What a career. Uh so getting into Italian wines um, more, um, you know, there are numerous uh, varietals and it's kind of overwhelming um, for the American consumer. Can you give us um, a general overview of some characteristics of the popular varietals and wine growing regions in Italy? Oh, well, that depends on who you ask, but yes, Italy is kind of a daunting um, wine country and and not only because region to region it can be very specific right Culin um, culinary wise and wine wise but there are rumors that there are over 2,000 great varieties just in Italy alone right wow. so a lot of these haven't necessarily been documented but there are vineyards that are growing on the hillsides and small towns that may be some obscure varietal that's been grown there for thousands of years right since Etruscan times. So it's a really unique and diverse region. Um, I think what people are probably most familiar with, what they know, right, Chianti, obviously, <clears throat> which for those of you that don't know is the Sangiovese grape, um, Pinot Grigio, I mean, Italy is the home. And although it's grown all over the country, the best examples are from the Northeast, uh, around Veneto and the Friuli region. Uh, and then the Super Tuscan movement, right? And that was something that happened in the 80s where the Italians were like, hey, we need to break the rules. Um, the Italian Ministry of Agriculture, just like the Ministry of Agriculture in France, is very strict about how they can label what goes into it, um, which is kind of similar to Oregon, right? We have some of the strictest wine laws in the country here. So it's really just to preserve purity of place, and that's very important for the Italians. Yeah. So speaking of some of those well-known, you know, Chianti, Super Tuscan. So if I'm standing in front of my uh, wine store aisle or grocery store aisle, and I have a ton of Italian wines in front of me, um, how, do you, how do you go about pairing them with food? I mean, we always think of 
Italy is pasta, which is Chianti, but can you give us uh, some suggestions of pairings? Sure. Well, one thing to consider um, about pairing Italian wine with food is the Italians are great at it, right? I mean, they, they make wine to go with food. Food, was their, food is their initial component. Wine comes secondary. So the wines of Italy are often um, high acid, low alcohol, meant to be consumed with lots of different foods. And if you're really interested, then you start thinking about the cuisine of a particular region because each part of Italy has very specific, um, typical cuisine and they make the wines to go with the food there. So um, a good example, a good example would be Nebbiolo, which is a grape that's grown in the Piedmont, uh, which makes the wines Scarolo and Barbaresco. You can also find it in um, labeled varietally Nebbiolo, um, but they also grow a lot of truffles there. So, and mushrooms. So you think about um, risottos or pastas with truffles, or even if you had a steak with, a, with some shaved truffle on it. And Oregon is also famous for truffles, right? So there are a lot of kind of corresponding things between um, Oregon and the Piedmont, maybe. The thing about Nebbiolo is it's very tannic. So it's like, it's like a Pinot on... <laughs> steroids? Yeah, like a Pinot, Pinot on steroids. <laughs> This has tons and tons and tons of tannin, so often they age really well for a long time. But there's a lot of similarities for pairings there as well. Um, I think another one to, to think about is oftentimes people overlook the south of Italy. Uh, places like Campania, Sicily, which makes some really beautiful wines. Um, but really, you're, you're kind of safe exploring if you're willing to step out of the box a little bit and, and look at the labels. Italians sometimes are good at labeling with what the grape is. Um, sometimes they're not. So again, it's kind of the crapshoot. That's why we have our handy cell phones to tell us a little bit about it. Um, uh, but for the most part, I think you're safe. Red wines are generally high in acid. Super Tuscans, clearly they're bigger, bolder red wines. And then there can be wines like Amarone, which is a huge, big, um, bold, dark fruit red wine. So, so it's really about exploring Italy. It's too hard to sum up in two minutes. It's like, don't go, don't go to the store and go for Chianti. Like, try an Alianico. Maybe try something from Sicily that you've never seen before. Um, Primitivo is related to the Zinfandel grape, so there's a lot of comparisons, but it goes on and on. Yeah, it's fun. Fun to compare, and certainly in this time of uh, quarantine and social distancing as everybody is um, becoming their own chefs and uh, taking more time in the kitchen. You know, it's, it's fun to pair the wine. So just to bring it back to the Oregon um, wine growing regions, and I know you've already mentioned some, but um, you know, I'm a big fan of our um, a medium body estate Pinot Noir and then also crisp um, Pinot Gris. Uh, which I think most people are wondering, okay, what's the difference between Pinot Gris, Pinot Grigio? Um, but if you can talk a little about comparing uh, those two varietals that we produce um, with something that would be an equivalent um, in Italy. Sure. I spoke a little bit about Nebbiolo and Pinot, um, other than the tannins, but I think a lot of the red wines, especially from the Piedmont, there's uh, Barbera, Dolcetto, some of those can kind of fit that category of medium bodied, um, high acid, right? Which we know often has a lot of high acid too. Um, I think another place to look if you're into that style, and, and these are they're some of my favorite regions too, because I also really enjoy that style. If you go south to Sicily, um, if you see a wine labeled Etna, Etna DOC, that means it comes from the slopes of Mount Etna. And those are generally, they're called the Barolo of the South. Right, so it's kind of that medium bodied structured tannic, really ar aromatic and floral. They can be made in lots of different styles, but they're really nice. And that's um, Norello Mascalese and Norello Capuccio are generally the grapes. Um, Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, one of my favorite all time red wines. It's inexpensive, it's good, it pairs with lots of food. That actually comes from the um, east side of Italy. And it's kind of a more fruit court. And there's lots of styles emerging now, right? Because we're so into tasting new wines and trying new things, that there's lots of Italian wines that were unheard of, you know, five or 10 years ago that are now coming on the scene. Uh, as far as white wines and Pinot Grigio, I would 
highly recommend seeking out some white wines from Campania. Um, mm. They are beautifully floral, crisp, delicate. Uh, Campania is also the, ho the home of uh, Naples, right? Napoli, which is the birthplace of pizza. So think about their red wines, which is uh, sometimes Alionico based are great with pizza, but the whites are floral and delicate. I'm speaking to Falangina, uh, Fiano di Avellino, and Greco di Tufo, which are some of my all-time favorite white wines. So that's a thought. So I was supposed to go to Italy um, in May and obviously need to reschedule the trip, but I will work, live vicariously through these suggestions you just gave. <laughs> Well, that's what we do though, right? That's why wine is so fun because it's like, well, I can't be there, but I can drink a wine from there and pretend. <laughs> yeah, and pretend. I mean, you can't go wrong with drinking Prosecco and eating gelato every day either. Right. That Italian feel. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and you just reviewed um, on another video our Cuvée Blanc, which kind of has that same relaxing, sit outside feel as you get from uh, Prosecco to just a great drinking summer, you know, late spring wine. Um, yeah. Um, so before I let Alexa go, uh, just want to remind um, all of you to continue to send us questions and we'll do more of these Q&A sessions. Um, Send us uh, your questions at info at puddingriver.com. And we have uh, just revamped our online store. It's up and running. Um, we're going to be expanding uh, this, the list of states that we can ship to, but certainly check it out. Um, and hope to do another session soon with Alexa and then also our winemaker, Sean Allen. So look for a future session, the three of us, about Pinot Noir. So... Thanks, Alexa. Thanks, Chris. Take care.